Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anne Sylvestre. We're going to place a bandage that is actually going to stay above the stifle of a dog. I know these can be difficult bandages to have them stay on and therefore fulfill their purpose. I've worked with fabulous people in my career and one of our technicians, Jennifer, who is just amazing at placing bandages, is going to help us demonstrate how to apply a bandage above the stifle of a dog so that it stays and fulfills its purpose. So watch Jennifer as she applies the stirrups along the metatarsals of this dog. It's very important that the stirrups not be along the pad, so apply them on the medial and lateral side of the limb. The next layer is going to be the cast padding. Now she's got a wonderful technique. She starts a little bit higher and that's so that the point or the edge of the cast padding will not stick out of the bandage and give the dog something to grab on and start to unwind your bandage. One of the problems with placing a bandage on the hind limb of a dog is that it tends to slide down below the stifle and therefore does not fulfill its purpose anymore. It tends to cause a, a sore, a bandage sore, right at the level of the hock, right at the front part of the hock where the bandage is bunched up the most. What you need to do to help get the bandage to stay on is bulk up the portion from the hock itself and to just above the hock with more cast padding so that what Jennifer calls the triangle of the leg becomes more of a cylinder than a triangle. So we are just increasing the amount of cast padding on the hock and just above it so that we get that cylindrical effect. Jennifer is going to show you where the patella and tibial crest are. Once she hits the tibial crest, she takes the cast padding and actually jumps over the stifle, goes above the stifle as high up into the groin as she possibly can, places several layers, several rolls of the cast padding there, and then finds her way back down below the stifle to the level of the tibial crest again, only to now make her way back up and actually cover the stifle with some cast padding material. The key here is to have enough bulk with your cast padding so that your bandage will have some shape and hold itself a little more firmly, therefore it will stay above the stifle. So a little bit more cast padding still, making her way once again above the stifle, as high up into the groin as possible, and making her way back down. She's actually going to check the how well her bandage is staying above the stifle by giving it a little bit of a of a tug. Once the cast padding is done we're going to apply the compressive layer or the cling. Again she starts above the toes, makes her way back down and once she starts going back up the leg is when she's going to start with compressing her cling over her padding layer. Now note that there's a lot of cast padding in this bandage so she can afford to apply a fair and needs to apply a fair bit of tension. Once she hits the tibial crest area again she's going to go above the stifle work her way back down. Now the tension has been applied but it's not that even because there's so much padding so she's going to apply yet more cling and now her goal is to even out the tension. It is really important when creating a bandage to have even tension so that it is comfortable to the patient. Not unusual for her to use two to three rolls of cling on a dog this size, a golden retriever size dog, when creating this style bandage. Now that the cling has been applied, we are going to take the stirrups and turn them back onto the cling for the purpose of keeping those toes exposed, not for the purpose of keeping the bandage on. This is an orthopedic 
bandage. If you want the, if the stirrups are keeping the bandage on, then your bandage is not fulfilling its function. Now for the sake of demonstration, we're going to apply a lateral splint to this limb. I actually do quite like the commercial splints. You can make your own if you want to. The splint can be applied so that the patient actually walks on the splint and no pressure is actually applied to the limb with every step that he takes. And for that purpose, this splint would be of appropriate length. You might want to cut off that little tip of the splint. Make sure there are no sharp edges when you do so. A Dremel tool works well for this, but you can also use a pair of scissors. I may want to have a splint on the limb, but I may want the dog to actually be able to bear weight on that leg as well. And if that would be the case, I would cut the splint down probably by just one groove so that the pads of the foot could actually touch the ground whenever he walk, walks. Now, Jennifer is applying some white tape just to hold that splint in place. And then she is going to apply a cling layer to better secure the splint to the lateral aspect of this dog's limb. Note how she cradled the distal portion of the splint with her cling. She can also apply some pressure. There's a good bit of padding. Some of these commercial splints are quite wide and may not fit very nicely at the proximal side of the bandage. Jennifer will often place some gauze squares between the splint and the compressive layer of the bandage itself just to help maintain that splint in place onto the lateral side of the bandage. In this dog, the splint seems to be fitting quite well. Jen is just gonna finish maintaining its position with her cling. And again, she has a lot of cast padding, so she can apply a little bit of compression here to help hold the splint nicely onto that bandage so it doesn't move and cause issues. The final layer is going to be the vet wrap or the protective layer. There are many different materials you can use here. Um, once again, Jen starts at the toes, works her way up, and the purpose of this layer is just to protect the bandage and just to help it maintain its shape a little bit more. So really all we want to do is cover everything that has been applied so far. So that vet wrap is going to just cover the entire applied bandage. Note that she did go above the stifle and work her way back down. It really does help to hold the bandage in place. With the protective layer applied, really Jen is done applying her bandage and splint. Jen is going to make sure that none of the hairs are stuck into the bandaging material. That would be uncomfortable, especially in the groin area, so just make sure that all the hairs are pulled out. Finally, Jen is going to apply a little bit of tape at the bottom and the top of the bandage and all it's doing is it's keeping the bandage material from popping up. So this tape is not sticking to the hair. It's just there to keep the bandage neat. She can get her fingers between the bandage and the limb of the dog. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for listening.